human suffering cries out for justice. The worst crimes must not go unpunished. Arise for your full of The past 15 years have seen the beginning of something new, a global system to bring to account those most responsible. The recent growth of international justice began just 15 years ago with the war in Yugoslavia. A specter of genocide once more gripped Europe. Civilians were being targeted, and the world said, enough. The United Nations sent peacekeepers, and the Security Council called for an international tribunal to arrest and try the worst of the perpetrators. Kofi Annan asked a South African jurist, Richard Goldstone, to be the prosecutor of this new tribunal. Justice Goldstone took over as prosecutor of the Yugoslav tribunal at a time when nothing was happening. There, were even, there weren't even funds available for that court, but he plunged right into it. When I arrived in The Hague, the international community, and the media particularly, had written off the Yugoslavia tribunal as a failure. There was a huge responsibility to get things right. I knew that if we didn't get it right, this was probably going to be the first and last attempt by the international community to set up an international criminal court. A tribunal like this had never been attempted. Judges and prosecutors from widely different legal backgrounds would have to cooperate in this justice experiment. And perhaps most difficult, the Yugoslav tribunal had to determine responsibility for the worst crimes. If you go back in time, you will see that the rhetoric was to point fingers at all sides, that everybody was more or less equally responsible for these crimes. But well, the work of the tribunal itself showed that there were leaders, individuals who were responsible for horrendous crimes. To build the cases, Teams of investigators collected mountains of evidence. Prosecutors sifted the evidence to make indictments. Judges issued arrest warrants. And finally, in 1994, the first prisoner was in the dock. The International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia is now in session. Among the most widely witnessed events that Tadic was involved in, Three prisoners were brutally beaten and tortured by Tadic and others using metal rods, truncheons and knives. The prisoners died as a result of their torture. When I think back about the war criminals I was involved with, I think, I think what they all really have in common is that they, on the face of it, ordinary human beings like you and me. Anybody is capable of uh, doing terrible things, given the circumstances. In Rwanda, in just three months, 800,000 people were slaughtered, while the international community did little to stop it. In response to this genocide, the UN established another tribunal, and with his experience in Yugoslavia, Goldstone was named prosecutor. Every one of the judgments that uh, I participated in writing in the Rwanda tribunal sets out the history of what went on. So in that respect, these tribunals are important avenues for recording history in an accurate fashion. There were denials of war crimes and gender crimes in both the former Yugoslavia and Rwanda. The perpetrators said this was propaganda. But the work of the tribunals through the evidence of many, many hundreds of witnesses has established that these things did happen and the denials really have stopped. Without the work of the Yugoslavia tribunal and its sister tribunal, the Rwanda tribunal, they would not have been the International Criminal Court. In 2002, the
the first permanent international criminal court came into existence. Today, over 100 countries are members of this court, mandated to prosecute the worst criminals for the most heinous crimes, genocide, crimes against humanity, and war crimes. The International Criminal Court is now in session. During the previous century, millions of people were victims of unimaginable atrocities. Atrocities which often remained unpunished. The measurement is not just what's happening inside this place. The measurement of this court is how the court impacts in the world. Because at the end, the court is, a, is important, but it's just a piece in a new system. The system includes regional courts, like the new African Court on Human and People's Rights, and its much older relative, the Inter-American Court, which was set up as a civil court to try governmental violations of human rights. In 1998, this regional court ruled that a Peruvian amnesty pardoning a death squad was illegal. This ruling opened the possibility to try former President Fujimori for human rights crimes. Peruvian judges rose to the occasion, exerting the authority of the court over the former head of state. The trial ended in a conviction and was widely viewed as fair and impartial. It's very auspicious for the rule of law because it sends a signal that no one is above the law. It's already uh, a, a very great landmark. It's, uh, it's as, as significant or more than in the 80s, the trial of the junta members in Argentina. It signals to the region that there's a new dawn of democracy and of rule of law. In Cambodia, the national criminal justice system combined with international justice to create a hybrid court. The basic idea behind a hybrid court is that it's located in a country where the crimes emerge. The Extraordinary Chambers for the Courts in Cambodia was set up to deal with crimes committed during the Khmer Rouge period between 1975 and 1979. It is set up to deal with the most senior officials and the, those who are most responsible for these really horrendous crimes. It uh, is composed of international judges and national judges sitting together, working together. The hybrid model was first developed to prosecute serious crimes from the war in Sierra Leone. On July 5th, the special court launched a fourth day of trials. One advantage of the hybrid court's location is that witnesses, victims, and the general public can appreciate the rule of law in helping to strengthen justice and peace. We're still in early days. International justice is still a relatively new thing. But it's the future of, the, of international justice is to have this relationship between the international criminal courts and domestic courts. I think the momentum began uh, for international criminal justice with the Yugoslav Tribunal. Within uh, a very short period of 15 years, you had international criminal justice a reality and a strong message that there will not be impunity for serious crimes any longer. And we will never look back. For any human endeavor to succeed, there have to be optimists uh, running it. Um, if, if all human beings were pessimists, we'd all be in chaos. And I believe that the only way to effectively withdraw impunity from all criminals and to bring peace to ravaged countries is by having an efficient international criminal justice system.